expectations of the regional planning meeting? Well, uh, just a few months ago, we had uh, a few high-level meetings in Istanbul uh, on ICPD at 50. And this was very important. 36 countries were there, and at the end, with 200 participants, at the end, it was so good because we had very strong call for actions. And it was really a renewed uh, commitment from all the governments uh, for these six, uh, 36 countries to the ICPD agenda. And very often we have conferences, we have workshops, and then we have not a very good follow-up. So I was really very committed to a good implementation on country level of this renewed commitment to ICPD at 15. So we have, we can strengthen our programs, we can be more focused uh, and of course the new priorities are on the heart of that uh, meeting. So in this regional planning meeting, we take all the results from and Addis Ababa, uh, the, the global meeting, uh, but also from uh, the MSG5 meeting in Istanbul, high level forum in Istanbul, the ICPD at 15, but also the parliamentarian meetings on ICPD at 15, and all these uh, call for actions and all these strategic directions are implemented today and tomorrow in our country approaches. Why is it important to involve our partners in the regional planning meeting? In a country you have parliamentarians, you have a government, you have a civil society, you have NGO, you have faith-based organizations. And all together, and just all together, we can achieve uh, the ICBD objective. It's really not possible to make any results just as uh, UNFPA. We are just a capacity builder. We are involved in advocacy, but we are not implementing by, them, by ourselves. That are our partners. So strong partnerships, uh, that's key for any any success. And I'm very happy we started in Bratislava, we continued over the last year, and again our main partners are here, so we can work hand in hand on the implementation of this uh, call for actions from Istanbul. In your view, what is so particular about this region? <sighs> yes, what is so particular in this region? It's, well, I guess like the other regions, uh, it's very diverse. Uh, Central Asia has own dynamics. Uh, Caucasus has its own dynamics. Of course, Russia, it's huge. And Eastern Europe. Uh, but I guess all over in this region, it's what I want to call a non-traditional development uh, challenge. We have countries, they are already member of the European Union. We have quite a group of uh, countries who want to become a, a member of the European Union. We have countries with resources, oil, and they have very, very fast-growing economies. Of course, we have Russia, one of the new big global players like China and Brazil and India. Uh, so it's they are in the whole transition, as middle-income countries, they are in the transition of being a recipient, but they become a donor. So what is very specific for this region is that, although there's still a long way to go in the ICPD agenda, because poverty, also due to the financial crisis, is still overwhelming uh, in, in, in this part of the world. Uh, but it's middle-income countries, so the role of the UN, the role of the UN uh, FPA is changing very rapidly. And Russia is uh, the first country, maybe, uh, who announced that uh, they are going to phase out the UN at the end of 2010. Uh, tomorrow, we are going to work on what kind of strategies we need to address this kind of uh, dynamics, like Russia is phasing out, Romania, Bulgaria, uh, they want
want to continue for another two years. Uh, and then new countries, uh, some countries mentioned already, okay, within a few years, we're going to change our partnership with the UN. So we really have to prepare it, uh, that we are, not, we are not in a traditional development role. It's not like with a country director and a country team and a rep and all the mechanisms, because our countries don't want that anymore. They want new demand-driven approaches with full ownership of the countries. And that's good news, because that's what we want. Thank you.